loves meatloaf. I despise it. I, I just do. I hate it. I hate it with every fiber of my being. So she's been asking me about meatloaf and I came across, I don't know, I was reading something one day and um, just recently and it was a French onion soup. Well, kind of meatloaf. And they used, I don't know, like French onion soup mix and you know, I'm not, I'm not doing all that. So I figured I'm gonna make my own on this and it might actually be something I'll enjoy. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm, a, I'm essentially just gonna make a French onion soup, uh, just a nice deep beefy broth, some nice caramelized onions, all that other good stuff. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna incorporate that into our meat um, with some of the usual suspects, um, you know, egg. Uh, I'm gonna use potato flake because that's what I like to do for my meatballs. It's, it's a great, great binder, man. It holds tons of moisture, adds no flavor. Potato flake is awesome in meatballs. So I'm assuming it's gonna be just as good in meatloaf. And then, um, you know, a little of that. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're going all the way, man, with some thyme, little uh, Greer cheese. Theory, one minute. And um, we're going to mix it all together. We're gonna to make a loaf. And then on the top of it, we're gonna to top it at the end with some more of the caramelized onions, some more Greer cheese, some fresh thyme. And I'm going to slice it and serve it on a toasted baguette with some of the leftover soup broth that we're about to make. Sounds delicious. So maybe I can make myself a believer in meatloaf again. I hate the shit. But anyway, this is what we're doing, man. Let's get it going. Real quick, we are just going to take some yellow onions. You can use Vidalia, you can use whatever you want. I just prefer yellow onions because when you caramelize them and you do it the way the French do it with butter, they just become this sweet caramelized deliciousness, man. So I just find the, if when I use Vidalia, they just, it, it's almost too much, you know what I mean? It takes away from that beefiness. So I'm using yellow onions. Feel free to do whatever you want, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna get these all cut up. I'm gonna do half rings. So we'll just do one here. Probably gonna end up crying. So instead of doing the full, since I'm gonna be using some of these onions actually in the loaf itself because I want it all to be like it. I'm just gonna go like that, you know what I'm saying? So we're just gonna half moon this. So I'm gonna bang these out and I'll get them in the pan. All right, I got my cooking partner here. Hey, you don't stand by that stove. You sit down. Thank you. Um, so we got our pan going on here. Got it nice and hot. Got our three onions done up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a half of that. And we are just gonna let that melt down. Give me a oh, I'd like to just get it just a little bit brown. Nice screaming hot pan at first. The onions are cooling down, but I just like to uh, just bring out that flavor in that first part of the butter. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're caramelizing onions, it's awesome. Adds such a nice flavor. I'm gonna keep this minimal on the stuff. I'll just try to explain a little bit on just what I'm doing, just how I do it. You know, I know there's been, uh, you know, the whole thing about long videos, but I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it, guys. You remember back in the day when you could watch, say, Food Network, or you could watch, um, you know, some channels, and you could actually watch a cooking show. Do you know what I'm talking about? Back in the day, man. I mean, there's now everything is competition and um, everything is 
here's a basket full of crazy shit, make some dinner out of it. You know what I mean? Stuff nobody has at home. Nobody's learning anything anymore. Nobody's enjoying watching somebody cook. So I, you know, it's kind of what this is. I just, I, I just want to cook food. You know what I mean? If you want to watch it, cool. If not, you know, hey, so be it, man. But I think, you know, you can't learn anything or you can't see how people do something different, you know, and, and stuff like that. You know, I mean, there's, you know, there was ways that I used to do things all the time. And then I seen somebody else do it a certain way. And I'm like, oh, damn, man, that makes a lot more sense. Or that looks a lot easier or whatever. You know what I mean? Not necessarily a better way, just maybe a different way that works, you know? And you don't get to see that anymore, man. Everything is, oh, here, you know? Make dinner out of jello and whatever the hell. You know, it's just it's just ridiculous, man. So that's kind of what this is. So yeah, sometimes the videos are long, but I'm going to, uh, I mean, I, I, I get it. I don't want to sit and watch 50 minutes either, but you know, 30 minutes, somewhere in there. Chances are, guys, it's just what they are. I'd like to, you know, at least add some information the best I can. You know what I mean? So, it is what it is. That's all I'm saying. So, now I'm going to let these cook down. When I'm caramelizing onions, I try not to move them too much. Just the initial, just to get butter on all of them. That's what I like. Just to make sure they're all coated. I do not salt them right now because salt brings moisture out. And if you're bringing moisture out of the onions too rapidly with salt, they never caramelize right, man. So don't salt them yet. Just let them go. So I'm going to let these guys go. Keep them just like this for maybe five minutes or so. Get them nice, cooked down on one side. Then I'll take my spoon and just kind of roll them all over. Do the same thing, you know, just kind of rip traverse, man. You move them too much, it'll take forever to caramelize. You know what I'm saying? All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. See, we got some nice dark ones here. All that flavor coming through. About to give them another roll. Oh, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I should have mentioned, I know you hear me say this a lot, non-reactive pan, man. Anything to do with broth, sauces, anything like that, Always, you know, not your cast irons. I mean, I love my irons too, but they are reactive type metal. Not to mention, I refuse to do any type of tomato or acidity or anything like that in my cast irons. I'm just a bitch like that. But, um, you know, no Teflon, you know, none of that stuff. Nice, either porcelain coated, enamel even, um, you know, not your ass seen on TV. Some stainless, which I prefer, but non-reactive. Build them flavors. All right, so I'm gonna let them go for a couple more minutes. They're really close. And then what we're gonna do is deglaze that pan with a little white wine, get all that flavor for them onions up, and then we'll start building our, um, our stock, our broth. I'll be using bone broth today. And uh, we're just gonna let her hang, man, and just gonna let it develop some flavor. We'll throw some fresh thyme in there. I got a little garlic to toss in there. Um, and we're just gonna let that shit cook, man. It's gonna be good. All right, guys, here we are, a couple minutes later. Come on, man, look at that. That is beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push these guys over a little bit because we're gonna do a quick deglaze and get all that nice flavor off the bottom of our pan. And let that join the party, you know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna use a, a white wine. Um, I know red wine is typically what you want to use with beef, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Just doing it like the French do it, man. So, I just got a Pinot Grigio here. that up and let's work on this little spot right here oh man i'm out ouch all right guess we're gonna have to get the rest of that with some beef stock she'll come up she'll come up and 
not opening another bottle. All right, so now I'm gonna add in two cloves, chopped garlic, and we're gonna, oh man, I have to have my wife open this for me. Hold on a second. Well then. Shit. Hold on a second, guys. All right, guys, so I had to kill the fire. The smoke alarms, they constantly go off, man. Especially when I'm cooking. But um, my wife's on uh, conference meetings and I'm down here setting the house on fire, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I added a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce in there as well. And now, yes, I know, it's flavor, man. We're gonna put the rest of our butter in. This is unsalted sweet cream. And we're gonna let that meld in there. Get that cooked down a little bit. Get our onions in there and get our bone broth in. We're gonna let that go for a little bit and then we're gonna add our herbs, things like that, so. Oh, making a mess. Did that get you? Did that get you? Steady doing the oak. Getting butter all over you. Seasoning you up. Never know. Beef's getting expensive, buddy. Sometimes a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Look at that. That's some richness right there, guys. All right, now. Bone broth, you can use beef stock, whatever, but bone broth, especially when it's made for sipping, it's a great flavor, especially when you're making broth. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna start with about two cups. We're not gonna need much. We'll need some at the end, but we're gonna need some for the, um, uh, the loaf itself. So, and it will reduce. So I'm gonna start with about two cups. And plus, by doing it that way, we're gonna build some crazy, crazy intense flavor into that broth, being less amounts. Do you know what I'm saying? I hope you can hear me over that fan. I'm trying to talk a little bit louder, but I can't shut it off. Even though she's upstairs between two doors and a floor, I can feel her staring at me, giving me the look. Because I'm setting the smoke alarms off. Oh, shit. Just trying to scrape that bottom off of that pan. Sorry guys. I guess that's a bad place for the doggies, huh? All right, so I'm gonna let this just roll for a little bit. As soon as it comes to a boil, I'm just gonna turn her down and just let her simmer, man. All right, here we go. Look at that. Oh, man, that's some good stuff right there. So what we're gonna do is we're going traditional here. So we're gonna toss in a bay leaf. And I have about three sprigs of thyme there. Or you could use, you know, like a teaspoon or so of, uh, of the dried stuff, whatever works. And that's it. I'm just gonna let this stuff turn and do its thing and just simmer and build some serious flavor. And then we'll get our meat going. All right, let's get our meat ready. Got about, I don't know, nice hefty pound or two there. I don't know, I pulled it out of my freezer. I'm not even sure exactly which grind it is, but from the looks of it, it looks like brisket. If I had to guess, but I mean, you can use whatever burger you, you normally use. So I didn't label which grind it was when I was ground it up and packaged it. So I have no idea, but from the looks of it, that's what it is. So we're going to do a clove of garlic in there. We are going to do Excuse me. <clears throat> Teaspoon 
granulated garlic. Teaspoon granulated onion. Add a little earthiness. Teaspoon of oregano. And just give it a little depth, some smokiness. Teaspoon of smoked paprika. And then suspects of course <coughs> we are going to do two teaspoons cracked black pepper and let me grab my salt two teaspoons Mold on flake, just like that. Now we are going to grab an egg. One nice egg here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, let me grab our stuff. Look at that color, guys. Oh, man. We're going to scoop in. Just some right off the bat here. Here, actually, I need to grab a different spoon. Hold on a minute. Onion I'm getting. Just sprinkling some for some moisture just to start, you know what I mean? And then we will uh, see what we need afterwards. Give her a mix. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I got something in my throat. And about a cup of our Greer. And our binder, potato flakes. Now, let's get it all together. can't see me, but I am turning my head to my shoulder, please. So, I don't know, I got an itch going on up there. I can't really get something to drink right now. All right, I'm actually gonna put a, some more of our French onion in there. So let me grab this spoon, so I don't care that it gets dirty. Focus on the mushrooms a little bit. I mean the uh, onions, jeez. All right, let me take some without the liquid. That should work. Nice, mixed up real nice. All right, it's definitely the color I'm going for. Tell there's a lot, a good amount of the stuff mixed in. So 
We need a little more potato flake. Just tighten it up a little bit. I knew there was gonna be a lot of moisture, so I have the pork panko standing on standby, just in case. But I'm not sure if I'll need it, actually. Cause I don't want it dense, I don't like it, you know, it's one of the reasons I don't like meatloaf in the first place. I'm just gonna test it. Yeah, you want it to hold under its own weight. You know what I'm saying? So I am going to, oops, clear my hand and I'm gonna put a, a little bit of pork panko in. You can just, um, you can just use breadcrumbs if you don't have this stuff. Oh, jeez, that ball rolled in there. Just get it that consistency, you know what I mean? That should probably do it right there. Pork panko takes on any flavor that it touches. So it doesn't really have its own, you know what I mean? That stuff's great to season up. It's essentially just uh, ground pork rinds. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we're looking for right there, guys. It's nice. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. All right. Let's get it in our pan, shall we? I'm gonna use a uh, loaf pan, wherever I put it. And I'm just gonna hit it with some spray. I don't feel like getting the oil out. We're just going to keep it honest on the sides a little bit. You know what I mean? Beautiful. Corners are filled. There we go. Beautiful. because I was dicking around while I was uh, waiting for the everything to cool and just letting our broth go. I am a little bit out of time, so we are going to throw this on the master belt. I was actually gonna do it on the Brazos, but I don't have the time to do all that. Trying to get her nice and even. So she's party. Eat with your eyes first, right? <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. There's our French onion soup meatloaf, man. So we're gonna bake this off. Then we're gonna hit it with some uh, more of our caramelized onions. And then some more Gruyere cheese. We're gonna melt that all down. We're gonna slice it off over a little bit of uh, soaked bread, soaked from our broth we made. And we are gonna dig in, guys. So. All right, let's get your pit lit. All right, guys, so I got her up to 350. You can low and slow it if you want. I don't have time for it. I seriously don't think it's gonna make any difference at all. So I am just gonna throw this guy right here, dead center, and that's it. So I'm just gonna let her roll. Um, we'll take it out when she's done, man periodically check it so throw our onions on it throw our other greer on it get her all melted on down there nice and uh eat
All right, guys. Check it out. Oh, man. Look at that thing. All right. Let's get it out. Let's get it dressed. Dressed for success on this guy. Get you right here. We got our onions. We got our cheese. I'm gonna take this bad boy right here. Oh man, look at that. Take all these delicious guys. It's like soap. Spread them along the top. Come on, look at that. And take the rest of our Gruyere. Don't skimp. Don't skimp. That's what I'm talking about. Ta-da! Look at that. All right, let's put her back in. Just for, uh, for the record, that was around around uh, 150, just short of 150 degrees. So I wanna at least finish it, you know, right around the 155, 160 mark. So figured that should give it plenty of time for uh, them onions to blend in, cheese to melt, all that other good stuff. So I'm gonna let that finish up and we'll dig in. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. Check it out, man. Come on. Oh, let's see how I can pull this off. Should be able to just get right underneath it, right? In theory, if I had a better spatula, maybe. Oh, shit. Let me grab my beast armor, my beast shovel. One second. Oh, my long. All right. the right tool for the job you know there she is check that out oh man oh does this fall off for me is this my glow taste right here holy shit damn that's good so real quick Take this guy right here. Grab ourselves a slice of this bad boy. Just like so. Check this out. We got our extra broth right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna spoon some of that right onto my oil bread. Not too much, just enough. I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna lay it on there, man. Check that out. That's it. French onion soup meatloaf. From what I just tasted, I may actually be a fan of meatloaf again. So, all right guys, that's all I got.